Welcome to Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry, Cape Coast Main Branch, where the undiluted Word of God is preached. Be blessed as you listen to today's sermon. Praise the Lord. Sit and be blessed. Amen. Look at somebody and say, You are unstoppable. You are untouchable. If you believe, say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, yes, since yesterday, we've been dealing on foundations. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I remember yesterday, I said, foundation determines how far we go in life. Praise the Lord. Amen. As a matter of fact, the difference between Europe and Africa is just the foundation. Praise the Lord. They don't have two heads. Amen, somebody. The same nine months that it took they stayed in their mom's, their mother's room. That's also the same nine months we all stayed in our mother's room. Amen, somebody. Did anybody here stay for five years? Praise the Lord. So, we were all created in the image and in the likeness of God. And God gave us dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every creeping thing. Amen, somebody. May you dominate in your world in Jesus' name. Whatever has held you down will release you tonight. If you can say amen, then receive in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I've seen great men wallow away, passed on because of where they are coming from. Amen. Many of you must have heard of one man of God they call Archbishop Benson Dowsa. He brought prosperity. In fact, Archbishop uh, Duncan William is a product of Benson Idaosa in Nigeria. That man of God was a great man. During his lifetime, he traveled to 139 countries of the world. He was the first black man to hold a crusade in Australia and over 50,000 people gathered. But he died before 60. And I asked, I began to ask a question. How, how, where were the angels of God? When death came. And when he died, so many pastors then were saying, I, God revealed to them that he has uh, finished his mission on earth. I said, yeah. Because of ignorance, I, I thought they were saying the truth. Praise the Lord. But as God keeps opening my eyes and understanding all life in the spirit, I discovered no. Something stopped him. Are you going to say? The anointing is different too from foundation. Praise the Lord. The anointing is different from what? From foundation. You can be anointed and still struggle. Praise the Lord. Zachariah, the father of John the Baptist, was a holy man of God. Yet he was barren. Have you read that story before? Do you know Elizabeth's husband was barren? Even when an angel came to inform him that he was going to, to uh, have a child, he didn't believe because time was no longer on his side. Hear me? Sacrifice is the food of the spiritual. I was preaching in a church in a state called Benue State. 5,000 sitters. After preaching, the woman of God came to me. The, the husband is the head of the church. came to me and said, Pastor, now, what you are saying is true. You know, look at how big our church is. People feel I'm blessed. But when I get to, it's a different ballgame. I said, Mama, what do you mean? She said that she has been married as of 2014. She has been married for 19 years without a child. I said, Mama, come, 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 come. I said, Can you tell me about your foundation? She said that her father was a witch doctor. So when her husband came to marry her. In fact, the witch doctor saw the level of poverty in the man and rejected both the man and his diary. And said, you can't marry my daughter. So the lady said, no way, papa. This is the man I want to marry. And after much pressure, the witch doctor asked the man to bring the diary. He collected the diary and buried it on the ground and spoke over that diary. As long as these people are married, that their marriage will not be fruitful. That held the woman down for 19 years. 
her husband was highly anointed, dangerously loaded, but he could not get his wife pregnant. Satan functions on legal ground. Satan cannot go to where he is not invited. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you know, when I met that woman, I, I asked her two questions. I said, go and get me a bottle of oil. She was a great woman of God, but she humbled herself. Go and get me a bottle of oil. She went to get it. I said, I need, a, I need sacrifice. She went. Her husband was a pastor, but she obeyed. Because why? Every man of God, you see, has an area in the spirit realm from where you're preached from. It's just like when you go to the hospital, you see doctors. Hey, are you a doctor here? Yes, I'm a doctor. Are you a doctor? I'm a doctor. Are you a doctor? I'm a doctor. But both all of them are different specialists. That's how it is. The woman understood what I was saying, and I gave her instruction. I asked her for sacrifice. She went to get the sacrifice. And I said, she should get the bottle of oil. She got it. We went to the village. The village is not close to, it's not too far from the church. When we got there, she showed me the compound. And I poured the oil. I said, Father, somebody brought this into this family and somebody must put an end to it. Now, as at the time I met this woman, she was in her late 50s. No child. Church, hear me. Do you know after that encounter, last two years, she conceived for the first time. Last year, she gave birth to a baby girl. She's over 60. Can you imagine a woman over 60 giving birth? Are you going to say, it happened in my ministry. I know what I'm talking. When I begin to talk to people, I speak from experience. I know what people are going through. I know people come to church and at the end of the day, when they get home, is in fact, so many of us are used to suffering. We see it as the pattern. Amen, somebody. We no longer understand. Praise the Lord. And it's not supposed to be so. Am I talking to the church right now? Please help me turn your Bible to the book of Joshua chapter 9. We're going to read verse 3. Amen, somebody. Verse 3. Somebody should, are we there? If you are there, Sam, the verse 3. Are we all there? Okay, let's read together as students of the Bible. Want to go? And when the inhabitants of Gibeon had what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they did walk willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. Verse 5. Everybody want to go? Old shoes and clothing upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry and the next verse, loud and clear. And they went unto Joshua, unto the camp of Gigah, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, will be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. Everyone say league. And that word for league is covenant. Do you have New King James there? Praise the Lord. Take us to New King James. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 7. Want to go. Then the man of Israel said unto the Hivites, Perhaps you dwell among us. So how can we make covenant with you? The next verse. But they said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you and where did you come from? Nine. So they said to him, From a very far country your servants have come. Because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard of his fame and all that he did in Egypt. Ten. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites. Who were beyond the Jordan to Sihon, king of Eshbon, and to all king of Bashan, which was at uh, Ashtaroth. The next verse. Therefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us saying take provisions with you for the journey and go to meet them and say to them we are your servants now therefore make make twelve this bread of ours we took out for our provision from our houses on the day we departed to come to you but now look it is dry and moldy the next verse and these wine skins, which we filled, were new and see, they are torn. And these are garments and our sandals, 
have become old because of the very long journey. 14. Men of Israel took some of their provisions but did not ask counsel of the Lord. 15. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live and the rulers of the congregation swore to them. 16. And it came to, and it happened at the end of three days after they had made the covenant with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt near them. 17. Then the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shephira, Birat, and Kiria, Jerim. 18. But the children of Israel did not attack them. Because the rulers of the congregation are sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation complained against the rulers. 19. Then all the rulers said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not, we may not. The next one. This we will do to them. Everybody loud and clear want to go. This we will do to them. We will let them live. Let's not be upon us because of the oath which you swore to them. 21. And the rulers said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers for all the congregation as the rulers had. Somebody shout, Amen. 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 Now, tonight I'll be teaching on covenant. Amen. A covenant is an agreement between two or more people for mutual benefit. Amen, somebody. Covenant distinguishes you among your equals. Covenant makes you see when others don't see. The Bible said in the book of Psalm 74 verse 20, God said we should have respect for the covenant for the whole world is full of evil. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's read it once to go. Have respect to the covenant. For the dark places of the earth are full of the haunts of cruelty. Praise the Lord. Covenant is an agreement between two or more people for what? Mutual benefit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the Bible, from what you read, the Bible said that the Gibeonites came from Accra. Praise the Lord. Because I know Accra is a bit farther than Takura. Am I correct? Which one is close? Okay. Between Accra here, between Cape Coast and uh, and what's the name of the next city? Not Winneba. Uh, Mike, what did you call it? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, they said they came from Accra. They came to meet uh, our pastor. They said they came from Accra. That they want to be identified with Joshua. Not knowing that these people were not from Accra. They came from Marcus. Is it Marcus? Marcus. Praise the Lord. When the covenant is established, there is no going back. Praise the Lord. A covenant can last for four generations. It's in the Bible. In Exodus chapter 20 from verse 3 to 5, the Bible said, visiting the iniquities of the Father of them that hate me from Todd. Okay, let's read it one to go. You shall have no other gods before me. Verse 4. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Somebody say amen. amen. A covenant is an agreement between two or more people for mutual benefits. Praise the Lord. Now, church, you know that some of us are from families that have covenanted themselves with the devil. Some of us are from villages that have been caught, that have entered into demonic covenants. Praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. 
a pastor in the UK married the first wife, she died. You know, in the morning I was talking about you getting married to deficit. You know, when we're growing up, they say, man of God, they will tell us. They say, if you want in assemblies of God, they say, if you want to marry a woman, the first thing you do, just go to the hospital, go and check your blood group. So when you go and check, if your own is AS and the woman's own is AS, ah, they will just say, no, no, both of you are not compatible. They will just separate you. Ah, when God opened my eyes, I see what, what an ignorance. God, the Holy Spirit can change blood group. Amen, somebody. Instead of them to check foundation, they are checking blood group. Praise the Lord. No, that is the truth. Because God can change your group, your blood uh, group. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there are foundations you enter, you can't come out. Because it's the foundation of grave, graveyard. I'm telling you, a pastor married a lady in UK. He married the first one. She died after giving birth to baby boy. Married the second one. She died after giving birth to baby boy. He married the third one. She died after giving birth to baby boy. Pastor close church. Came back to Nigeria to ask questions. And the oldest man in the village... Told, said to him, one of your ancestors was a hunter. He went to hunt in the bush. And while he was hunting, a, a pregnant woman came into that same bush to fetch firewood. So as the woman was trying to carry the firewood, she fell under labor. The child began to come out. So she started shouting. The hunter heard the woman scream and ran towards the place. And discovered the woman was in labor. Instead of him to help her, he raped her. And the woman died. They took him to a fetish priest. Praise the Lord. They took him to a fetish priest. You see, some of you are laughing. You don't understand. Amen, somebody. What I'm teaching here is not a laughing matter. There are some of you that need to go and ask your parents questions. So you can walk out of those things. Do you know that the woman was supposed to give birth to a baby boy? He denied. They took him to his priest. He kept lying and they placed the curse on him and his generation. So this pastor, his own mother died after giving birth to him. There are families like that. A pastor in Nigeria. Look, foundation does not respect anointing. When your foundation is, is faulty, you must deal with it. You don't say, I'm a pastor. Amen, somebody. Old things are passed away. You know, uh, our, uh, our friend Richmond, you know, he submits to Paul and Lynch. Thank you. Now, you see, Paul and Lynch has the biggest church in the globe. I beg it. Now, do you know that I knew Paul and Lynch when he came to Abuja? In 1996, I can say Paul Enche is a medical doctor by profession. So when he graduated, he wanted to go to UK to continue his studies. Then God now revealed to Abel Damina because he was a Sunday school teacher in Damina's church in Jos, and Talena was the head. So Enche was under Talena. Do you understand? I know a Nature's immediate younger brother who died two years ago. He just a pastor. He has done pastoral job all his life, but his church never saw light. And he died two years ago. He's like the next person to him. Now, when a nature when God revealed to uh, to Damina that he's going to use a nature. So he now called a nature and told him not to travel that God said he wants to use it. It was true then he started the work. Within 1996 and now he has the biggest church in the globe. Now before he came, even those who God used to speak to him is bigger than them. Now that does not mean that he's more anointed than them. He was able to deal with what stopped his fathers. The more you deal with these things, the more God will open your eyes to the mysteries of the supernatural. As I stand here, 
I knew where God met me spiritually. There was a day I saw myself in my father's compound. And I saw myself mentioning names of people who, are, who lived in that compound. People from that foundation. And I saw myself mentioning the names of people that I've not met in my life before. Nobody has told me about them. And in the spirit realm, I said, you limited this person. You limited this person. You limited this person. But I, Chuksundoka, you cannot limit me. It was in the center of my father's combat in the spirit realm. In 2012, it was from there my heaven broke open. If I had not conquered them in the spirit, nothing changes here. And there is a spiritual condition over every human being you see. The spiritual condition of your life determines what goes on in your day-to-day -day life. Are you following what I'm saying today? Now hear me. If, do you know that a pastor in Nigeria also started a church and without dealing with his foundation. And you know, one day he was just in the church and the leaders were no, no longer submitting to him. And he just came up one Sunday and said, all you executives, you leaders of this church, I disband you and I dissolve the, the executives of this church. I want the one elder came and took microphone and said, we restate ourselves in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and church, every day began to fight. By the time they finished fighting with pastor, church scattered. The man didn't understand. The foundation was playing games with him. He started again. The second one, do you know what happened? The second one, he went for baptism to baptize members in the sea, in the river. And a pregnant woman got drowned and died in the water. Police came and arrested her. i uh, sorry, and arrested him. By the time he buried himself, his church closed down. After many years he came, he started the church again. You see, I'm starting with pastor, so you can understand what I'm talking about. He came and started again. The third time God helped him, the church grew up to 500. He now got a driver for himself and got the driver's wife pregnant. And the church scattered. And do you know what happened? When they now began to, when he now went to prayers to trace why these things were happening to him. And they discovered that one of his ancestors slept with the wife of a king in the village. And the king placed a curse on their generation that none of them will ever come up in life. There are families like that. Whatever cause is hanging on your neck, it is broken tonight. Yeah. Are you in the church tonight? Yeah. There is no smoke without fire. Another pastor in Nigeria will start a church. The church will grow to 500. And before you know it, he will sleep with one member. And the news will come out, church will scatter. I told you here when I came, I said, people don't suffer because they are bad. Though. People suffer because of where they are coming from. Because that foundation has a strong man. That when he wants to enforce the law, the spirit will come upon you and you see yourself doing what you don't want to do. Why? Because of the foundation. Because of the blood that runs in your vein. Do you know? You will stay with the member. Church will scatter. He will start again. The church will grow. He will sleep with another member. Church will scatter. He kept on and on and he became ashamed of himself. He now went to God in prayers. Do you know where foundation? Can I ask you a question today? Now, is there any of you that can resist sleep when sleep comes in the night? Can anybody resist sleep? When you feel like sleeping, you say, no, in the name of Jesus, I can't sleep. <laughs> is it possible? If you can't resist sleep, you can't resist foundations. When they begin to play, the only thing that gives you power over them is the Holy Spirit. You can't resist them because you are a spirit being. These are forces that have been operating thousands of years. Hear me? It's the same demon that Jesus casted out that we are still dealing with. Too. There's no new devil. They have been there. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have what? Been there. So what gives you advantage over them is what I'm teaching you. Hey, you want to chase them away? Sacrifice. You want to chase this one? 
sacrifice. You want to change? Am I somebody? Abraham. He took God. He took Abraham 25 years to see Isaac come into existence. And see, when Isaac came, God still came back and said, bring him back. Can you imagine that? There's somebody who will be preaching and tell you, God, Jesus has done everything. Fine. Jesus gave you the new foundation. But you must settle the old foundation so that the new one can prevail in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen, somebody. Now, hear me. Hear me. Do you know that the person went to God in prayers and God now revealed to him. I said, go and ask your mother a question. There is something she knows that she has not told you. And the man went to the village, met the old mother, and said, Mama, there is something you know that you must tell me today. After much pressure, the mother said, the man whom I said was your husband, I mean, was your father, is not your father. A pastor screamed. I said, who is my father? And she said, why, why, why she was a teenager, she used to clean the Reverend Father's room. From there, Reverend Father started making advances on her. Before she knew it, Reverend, Father's, Reverend Father started sleeping with her. And from there, she got pregnant. So when her own father got to know about the pregnancy, her father called the youths in the village. They came to the Catholic church, beat the Reverend Father, and drove him out of the village. So this pastor was a priest by birth. But the same spirit that drove his father out of the church followed him into the church. It will, he will build, it will scatter. He will build, it will scatter. There is no smoke without fire. Are you getting what I'm saying? When your foundation is faulty, deal with it. Don't quote scriptures. Because as you are quoting those scriptures, the demons are very angry. They are angry. You are quoting scripture. Okay, you will soon sleep. We are coming here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's why some people they will fast and pray. And the more they fast, the more they come to give them food in the night. Because they have not dealt with the roots. You fast, fast, you finish. I know a, a, a guy, he went on seven days dry fasting. I'm telling you, those days, he went, man of God, he went on seven days dry fasting. The day he finished, the girl he has been proposing to for long walked into his house. He slept with her. After sleeping with her, his eyes opened and he started crying. They look, they watch over demons, they have their network system. So that's why they assign familiar spirit to people. You know the mission of the familiar spirit? The mission of the familiar spirit is to alert them and inform them of everything going on in your life. They are there. They are the ones that react. It's not because it's a short program. If not, if we had gone into deep deliverance, you would have, you would have been surprised here. You, they are the ones that react in people, saying, I won't go. Amen, somebody. That's the familiar spirit. They assign people to, they assign themselves to people. Make sure you follow them. And their job is to inform the strong man of what is going on in the person's life. So you see some people, they say they are very secretive. Don't let my neighbors know. <laughs> Your neighbor is not your enemy. The real enemy is there. You listen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Say nobody must hear this, you know. I'm getting contract. I have a member like that in my church. You say we don't want to tell any member. I love. I say deal with the familiar spirit. When you deal with the informant in your life, you will scale through. Somebody say I'm here. And God will touch my life today. Amen, somebody. Now hear me. The Gibraltar scam. They said they came from Accra, not knowing that they came from Marcusin. Praise the Lord. And when a covenant is signed, there is no going back. A covenant can last for 400 years. I was preaching in a city called Thessaloniki in Greece. And I saw one Nigerian man all through the program at the back. And the last day I called him, I said, brother, come, come, come. Why are you always at the back? He said, Pastor, you won't understand. He said he left Nigeria in 1994 to a country called Lebanon and walked on foot from Lebanon into Syria. He walked on foot from Syria into Turkey and walked on foot from Turkey to Greece. Amen. He said, he said the reason why he's at the back is because of the police. In case the police come so he can be able to escape. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
And he looked at me and said, look at the man at the front. He said, that man is my blood brother, my elder brother. I looked at the two of them. They live in Europe, but Europe is not in them. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> somebody who lives in Europe, but it looks like somebody in a remote village in Ghana. You know what I mean? And I called him. I said, can you tell me about your family? He said to me, he said, one of his ancestors was a warrior. Now when he died, they buried the life slave with their grandfather. The Bible said, our parents have eaten so grape, and today our tooth is decay. Read your Bible. It's Ezekiel chapter 18 from verse 2 down. It's there. Amen. The Bible said, our parents have sinned, and now they are gone, and we bear their iniquities. Amen, somebody. What you are today is as a result of the decisions that somebody somewhere made yesterday in your family. And where you will be tomorrow depends on your decision tonight. That's why when I go to church, I don't look at people. So I say, go and sacrifice. If you obey, you will remember me. Because that was what got me out. So you can come out. God is not partial. God is the same. He is for everybody. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you know that when the Gibeonites came, they said they came from Accra, not knowing that they were from Marcusing. And Joshua did not inquire from God. He went into covenant with them. After that covenant was signed and sealed, they now discovered that these people were not from Accra, but they came from Marcus. But then, the covenant has been established. And what did they say? This Joshua and his men said, well, we have promised not to touch you. We will not touch you. But as long as you remain, you will remain servants to us. Praise the Lord. The Bible said they will remain woodcutters. Did we read, read that from the Bible? They will remain what? Woodcutters. What does that mean? They will remain what? Slaves. Are you following what I'm saying? And the Bible said, 350 years after the death of those who made that covenant, a king called Saul came up and broke the covenant. How did he do that? He killed the Gibeonites. His ancestors promised not to touch the Gibeonites. Saul killed them. And David, who was not there when the covenant was established, he wasn't there when the covenant was broken, just came and began to suffer what he knew nothing about. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. Can I hear the amen to that? Take me to 2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel 21. Amen. Praise the Lord. Church, let's read together. I want to hear your voice loud and clear. Now, there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house. Because he killed. Oh, church, are you tired? Because he killed. Now, from what you've just read, you can see within yourself that there is no problem that has no roots. There was famine for how many years? I can't hear you. For how many years? And did David bind and lose? John, did he bind and lose? What did he do? Not like Christians today. Hey! Begin to say, bind them. And you bind all the demons in Cape Coast. You cast them to the, the Gulf of Guinea. Is it Gulf of Guinea you call it? Amen, somebody. And the demons will be looking at you and say, Am I the cause of this one's problem? Let's leave him to fool himself. Amen, somebody. I'm telling you, amen, somebody. Demons, they have time. They have time. It's only true knowledge that you can defeat them. But I say true knowledge shall be just be delivered. So a just man without knowledge will always remain in prison. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those days, there was one day, man of God, in the, in the 90s, I told God I was going to do uh, three days, seven days dry or so, I can't remember. And the first day, by 6 p.m., I went and eat. And God opened my eyes. And I saw demons were laughing at me. From that day, I, I stopped that rubbish. 
God just opened my eyes. I saw them God laughing. He said, What to fast? Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Am I somebody? Because why God opened my eyes? Because I used to do that before. There was another day I said, I want to do 21 days dry. I carried a gallon of water, locked my room in Nigeria and worried them. That same day, my sister cooked. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> my sister cooked. And the Arab came into my room and I opened the door. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I learned lesson. I became angry. From that day, if I say I want to fast, nothing stops me. Amen, somebody. So that is it. Demons, they have time. So their mission is to make sure you don't fulfill purpose. Can you imagine? Jesus said, when a demon is casted out, it goes into a wide place. And after roaming around, he will come back. When he finds the place empty, he will go and get more dang- seven dangerous demons. Why would those demons follow him? It is because there is agreement between them in the spirit. It's we Christians that are not in agreement. You see a pastor fighting another pastor. You see a Christian not talking to the neighbor. Amen. And the Bible said the kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. So division in the body of Christ is the reason why we don't have upper hands over demons. Are you following what I'm saying today? Don't hear me. The Bible said he inquired from God and God said it's because of Saul and his bloody house because he killed the Gibeonites. And what did, what did he do? He didn't buy it. Do you know what he did? He went to the Gibeonites. He went to them. And he said to them, what do you want me to do so that you bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said, we don't need anything. No. Just give us seven men from the house of Saul that we may kill them. Are you following what I'm saying now? So the solution was not in binding and what losing. The solution was in restitution. Somebody say, I hear you. Now, let's read together. I want to go. He says, so the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now, the Gibeonites were not of the remnants of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them. Did we see that in Joshua? Did we see that in Joshua? But Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Three, everybody loud and clear. Therefore, David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? And with what shall I make the atonement? That ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord. Can you see reconciliation now? Can you see reconciliation now? Amen, somebody. The next verse, four. Want to go. And the given I said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Verse 5. Everybody loud and clear. Then they answered the king. As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the course of territories of Israel. Six, one to go. Let seven men of his descendants be seven men of what? Church, you know, answering me. Seven men of what? Seven men of what? Are you getting the knowledge now? Let's read it one to go. Let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them. Before the Lord, he give you a son whom the Lord choose. And the king said, Now stop them, my brother, stop them. Let seven men of his descendants be given to us. Were they there when they saw, when they broke the law? Were they there when the covenant was established? Now they have been made to pay for the sins of their father. After today, by your sacrifice, the blood will cancel every accuser. The power of the accuser will be cancelled. Can I hear living a man to that? 
the king said, I will give them. And you know what David did? David ran to the house of Saul. Praise the Lord. When he got there, he looked at them and said, your father caused the problem. Do you know for three years there was no food in the land because of the sin of one man. And most of the problem we have in, in Africa, can I shock you, is from the leaders. How? Some of them, in the verge of remaining in power, they sell their soul to the devil. One man, there's one man in Nigeria. He was in government. He didn't want them to topple him. So he went to a witch doctor. And the witch doctor now gave him a padlock. Are you following what I'm saying? And say, speak to this padlock. And say, nobody will be able to unseat you. He spoke on that padlock. The day we just say, after speaking, use it to round your head seven times, then padlock it and throw the padlock into the river. Church, the man did what the witch doctor asked him to do. And that's how he remained on that position for years. But finally, there was a change of government and it affected him. And, you know, they removed him from the seat. He suffered and suffered and suffered. He suffered. He suffered. No job, nothing. Finally, he gave his life to Christ. But his life was full of crisis. Praise the Lord. And do you know that even when they asked him to come for, him, for a job, before he would get there, they would tell him that somebody else has been given the job. He kept on and on until God that revealed to him. That uh, God that revealed to him uh, that the padlock that he threw into the sea is the reason why nothing is working for him. So you see, somebody who has invited witches to such an office, whoever comes and take over, if the person is not born again, the demon will continue to rule that office. That's the problem we have, even up to presidency. Some of them, they make evil sacrifices to remain so that people will not look on them. Some are in the banks. They will make sacrifices to make sure that nobody removes them. That's why demons have taken over the hems of affairs in Africa. We have a lot of, of gold, mineral, things, but yet it's not seen because there are demons claiming over these things. I'm telling you the problem of the African man. Amen, somebody. Even in Nigeria, it's the same thing. In fact, in fact, the truth, let me just open up. When I studied Ghana and Nigeria, it's the same thing. No difference. Praise the Lord. Man of God is the truth. No different. It's the same pattern, the same government, the same everything. The only thing I see that is different from, from Nigeria is the security wise. The Ghanaians are more peaceful, more conscious of security. They don't hurt their neighbors. But in Nigeria, <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. That's the only difference. But when you talk about system of government and how things are run, it's the same thing. Amen, somebody. So God will give us deliverance. Oh, church, I don't like amen. He said, God will give us deliverance. Yeah. Well, God, when I traveled to India last year, when I saw the, how battered India was, I said, this is the, where the demon that is fighting Nigeria came from. Praise the Lord. Because it's the same thing. No difference. So I'm not saying it's true. All these are leaders who went to India to seek for protection. They brought demons from India into, uh, into our country. Now, Nigeria is like India. Praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. That's why we have a lot, but nothing is happening. People are suffering. Graduates are coming out of school every year, but there's nowhere, nobody to employ them. Is an error. The Lord will give us deliverance. Yes. The Bible said, David went to the house of Saul. When he got there, he said, your father caused this problem. You will pay for the sins of your father. He looked at the first person. He gave to them. He looked at the second. Gave to the Gibeonites. Look at the third person. Gave to them. These were descendants of Saul. But when he got to the fourth person, he discovered a man called Mephibosheth. 
Who was Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan. Who was Jonathan? Jonathan had a covenant with David. And the Bible said when David saw Mephibosheth, he speared Mephibosheth because of the covenant between his father Jonathan and David. So if there was no covenant between David and Jonathan, Mephibosheth would have died like the other seven. You would not die the death of another man. Now read it to yourself. Amen, somebody. Let's read it. Where to go? But the king speared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the lost oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So death came to the house of Saul. But covenant separated the people. Are you going to say? Praise the Lord. Why? Because of the covenant between David and Jonathan. And that's why you see, when you come, I ask you for sacrifice. Because when you drop that sacrifice on the altar, a covenant is established between you and this altar. So what is going on in your family will no longer be visible in your life. Can somebody say, I hear you tonight? Can somebody say, I hear you tonight? Amen, somebody. I was preaching somewhere and I met a sister. And she said to me, say, man of God, all my life is disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. And when you see this sister, she's so beautiful. But marriage was not forthcoming. And I, I told her, I said, where is your mother? Was your mother married? She said, no. Her mother had never been married. I said, where is your father then? She said, the father left the mother when she was young. There was nothing in between them. And I asked her for sacrifice. Amen, somebody. It was in Akure, a state, I mean, a kitty, a state called a kitty in, in Nigeria. I said, where is your... She explained, I just asked her, how old are you? She said, 33. That was in 2017. She said, she's 33. I said, go and take a sacrifice of 33,000. Tell God that whatever has been following you for the past 33 years, as you are laying this seed on the altar, you are handing them over to the altar. Angels are hearing me. She laid that time. If she was a mushroom, she does all these mushroom things. She sells all these petty things outside. How she managed to get that 33,000, I don't know. But when I'm giving you an instruction, I know it will bring you out. Must you die in purpose? No, it's an error. Must you die struggling all the days of your life? Must you go through what your parents went through? It's an error. Am I talking to the church right now? It is an error. You don't have to repeat the history of your fathers. You can come out of it. Why? Because the power of Jesus is greater than the power that held your parents down. Do you know last year she called me, 2018. I have her on my Facebook. She called me, say, man of God. He said, you are a man of God. They are coming to pay my diary next weekend. I have her. I was so happy. Next time, if I go to that church, if I instruct her, she will do it. She said, they are coming to pay her diary. And as God will have it, the man came this time paid her diary, and she's married. What was the instruction? Whatever has been following me since I came into this world 33 years ago, as I laid this seed on the altar, I laid them before the altar for judgment. And God broke that thing. God will break something in somebody's life today. I said God will break something in somebody's life today. Sacrifice is the food of the spirit. Sacrifice one year and see how your life will be. Amen, somebody. When you begin to sacrifice, no grave can receive you. No grave. When they call your name in the spirit, the blood of Jesus will answer them. Amen. Sacrifice. And that is why I love Nigerian Christians. There's no way in this world they give like in Nigeria. No way. Don't be deceived though. You see some of them doing sakawa. Don't be deceived. Amen, somebody. When you have 12 children, there must be one Judas inside. Amen, somebody. Amen. Jesus had how many disciples? 12. So one was there. So in a country of over 200 million, don't expect everybody to be normal. Praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you go inside and see Christianity, you see another level. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the secret is in giving. Giving destroys the hand of the enemy. That's why the devil fights your giving life. He fights your giving life. He fights you not to give. When you understand what giving does in the spirit realm, it will change the history of your family. It will turn things around. Am I talking to the church right now? Amen, somebody. I was also preaching somewhere in Nigeria. I met a brother. And the brother was telling me, he said, he's HIV. In Portacot, one of the assemblies of God. He's HIV positive. I looked at the wife. You are you HIV? He said, no. I said, the how come? She explained to me. And I said, go and raise a sacrifice of your age. Bring it to the altar. That was around 2013 or thereabouts. He brought it to the altar. And I said, go back to the hospital. This young man went. The same doctor that said there was a, a, the same doctor that said he has HIV came and said the something has disappeared. And that was what gave me breakthrough into the assemblies of God. I preached in uncountable assemblies of God. In fact, it was assemblies of God that brought me to Ghana. Where I met Zotu, Reverend Zotu, was in one of the assemblies of God in Portacot. Amen, somebody. I was preaching in under assemblies of God. I was talking about sacrifice. That was in 2011. A man was blind at the back. I don't know how this blind man managed to raise this sacrifice. It was a wife that led him to the altar. I saw he laid the body on the altar. I saw that he was blind. And I wanted to lay hands. Something in me said, no, don't lay hands. So if you lay hands and this man's eye didn't open, these people will say you are fake. Am I summary? And the Holy Ghost said to me, lay hands. And my own spirit said, don't lay hands. Because people are looking at you. Praise the Lord. And you know what I did? After some few minutes as I was raising prayers, something now spoke to me, okay, they should start praying. Because when they are praying, they will not see me when I lay my hands. Praise the Lord Jesus. So when people were praying, I walked up to him and laid hands on him. And he fell under the anointing. When he fell, he said light came to his eyes. And the scale left him. That man walked out of the church see him, in 2011. There is nothing sacrifice cannot do. It was when he came to lay the sacrifice that I discovered him. If he had not come out, I wouldn't have discovered that there was a blind man in that place. Are you going to say? Sacrifice can get you out of that prison. You are coming out by fire. You are coming out by fire. In the name of Jesus. As we close, I told us in the morning, time does not solve this thing. So when you see a man of God like this come around, take advantage of it. Time does not help. Don't believe that Nana, Nana Kufado is bringing what others don't have. No. Amen, somebody. The government of Ghana is not your problem. The government of Ghana will not help you. Amen, somebody. When your foundation is in order, the heavens will open over your life. And when your heaven is open, you don't need the government. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't need the government. The government do that. They are, are begging God to help them. Amen, somebody. Because they have made so many promises. And he is not coming as ever somebody. They do they need help. So help is from God. May God locate you in Jesus' name. Am I talking to the church today? Amen, somebody. Met a woman in Portacot and she brought granola. She gave me granola. And I said, Mama, what do you want God to do for you? She said, Nothing. I just. Feel like giving you granites. And I say, well, Where is your husband? She said, I've never been married. How old are you? 63. One of your children. She said, Pastor, I said, I've never been married. Where would the children come from? George, hear me. I didn't know if I should start binding or losing. At 63. And I called and said, Come and tell me about your foundation. She said, Her father was a ritualist. And killed so many people. Now the father is dead, but she's suffering because of the sins of her father. By your sacrifice, God will correct that foundation tonight. Thank you for listening. You can locate Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry at the Ogwa Teachers Hall, Bakano, Cape Coast.